know what you're thinking, viewer. What is Madness Beverage? It's a video game, Ronica. It wouldn't be on your channel if it was the latest energy drink or sex position. Quiet, you. Yes, tis a video game. It's the shitty indie shooter that I referenced last week. Now it's here to get the spanking it deserves. Though I should point out that after the absolute snore that was Summertime Madness last week, I am happy to be back playing a game where you actually get to do something. I said and explained why I enjoyed walking simulators as a genre, but when one fails and generates enough collective boredom to produce six seasons of The Office, I will drop to my knees and practice practically worship the next game I get to play, if it so much as even has one extra interaction. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. In Madness Beverage, you play as a stock badass white dude who I am certain you can buy a six pack of from the local asset store. I think they come free with shooting mechanics and an awful script writing software. You're after this Star Wars reject dude because they have closed the gates of hell, freeing us from death and are now using an army of demons to murder people. Um, Ronica, I hate to be that gal, but... That makes so little sense, it actually makes negative sense. I know, right? I don't get what's happening either. But it might just have been my brain shutting down every time the voice acting began. I cannot stress enough just how painful the lines of spoken dialogue that come out of our character's mouth are. His voice acting is, at best, as lively and engaging as a dead dung beetle. There are drastic shifts in his audio quality when he speaks, but worst of all, in battle he will repeat the same lines over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. An attempt to make our character look like a badass action hero who plays by his own rules falls flat, and it just made me want to silence the dude. In my personal fantasy, he's locked in a room with a big fuck off ball gag in his stupid, stupid mouth, and he's forced to listen to his own bullshit for eternity. Now that's what I call hell. Anyway, enough of the generic dipshit. The opening mission sets up the basics for you. You shoot from the first person perspective, and golly gee willikers, if only we had a name for a legendary type of game like this. You're clearing a big medieval castle to get to Star Wars Reject, whose name will probably appear on screen multiple times as I talk about this, but as I write this script I simply cannot remember what it is, so I'm going to stick with Star Wars Reject. The combat is functional, if fun interesting. You get one of the best guns in the game to start with, which I do question a little bit. It's a reasonably powerful assault rifle with a deep magazine, a quick reload time, and it's pretty accurate for an automatic weapon in a video game. Also, its ammo is plentiful in the levels. I don't know, maybe I just feel like the best weapon in the game should be one we have to build to for a little while rather than just being handed it as we enter the door. But anyway. You get to Star Wars Reject Man, and then the game does a naughty. You see, this is a supposed to lose fight, but unlike most of them, the Star Wars Reject is about as threatening as a baked potato with a doodle of a switchblade on hand. He does move around a lot, but he doesn't do much damage and isn't very accurate, so I was, I was doing quite well against him in that fight. But then the dev realised that the rest of the game had to happen somehow, and so the game had to pretend like I was in trouble. So we have to run off with our tail between our legs because apparently we got defeated somehow. We end up fleeing to a space market and our mate tells us how we can defeat the dude. Question, Ron. Why is this game called Madness Beverage? Oh, because of what I will charitably call the game's unique mechanic? I guess central mechanic, well actually it's not even central. Fuck, what do I call it? Because of a mechanic in the game, okay? See, after speaking with the dude at the space market, by the way, I'll be ripping on both of those things later, so stay tuned, we're given a quest to seek the madness drops that can make the madness beverages to give us powers. You get a madness drop at the end of each level, so basically it's just going through levels to learn new skills, but just in the form of drinks. Thing is, of all the different skills you can unlock, I only ever used the one, and it was a purple drink which reduced the damage you take. There was one that slowed time, there was one that increased your damage, there was one that let you see through walls, but I never felt a need to use any of them. The basic purple one worked perfectly well, and that was when I remembered I even had the bloody thing. These drinks, they're not really vital, and they last about as long as I do in the bedroom. I'm just kidding, of course, I've never made it that far. Possible partners tend to avoid me when I do my mating dance. In hindsight, the bus probably isn't the place to do it. Anyway, what's worse is the drinking animations are so overlong. In fact, I swear our bloke's arm is sore from jerking himself off too much, because he takes between one and four seconds to actually do anything with his arm. He can't drink fast and he can't even throw grenades quickly. Not that the grenades are worth much, you lob them and then there's a pathetic little pop and then the enemies just go bye-bye. Speaking of enemies going bye-bye, there are no death animations. Enemy models just vanish when you kill them. They're just replaced with goo. It's odd because there's this one weapon, the force gun, which knocks enemies on their ass for about 10 seconds a pop, and the enemies it affects have this overlong getting back up animation, even though this is the only weapon in the game that does that to them. Why skip on the death animation when every gun can kill, but remember to put in an overly long getting back up animation when only one gun can knock them on their ass? I'm just really confused with this. Maybe making a death animation was too hard, but really? How hard is it to just make a dude fall over? You don't even really have to animate that, you could just ragdoll the dude. 
Speaking of alternate weapons, by the way, you can carry three at a time, two basic weapons and one heavy weapon. The heavy weapon I used was the minigun, which was basically just the assault rifle again in terms of function, but with a bit more ammo and damage. Apparently there's a spear gun somewhere, or a harpoon gun, I can't remember which one, I just never bothered touching the thing. I always kept the assault rifle on hand as well, because again, basically one of the best weapons in the game. And at the end of the game I ended up using that force gun thing because it was accurate and did a lot of damage per shot and had deep ammo reserves. I'll grant that it wasn't amazing against the larger enemies, but the starting assault rifle never took more than a magazine to take them down. See what I mean about being one of the best guns in the game. I also thought it looked kind of cool, I like the design of the assault rifle. There are other weapons of course, you've got a pistol with bouncy bullets, a shotgun, a sniper rifle and a few other things here and there. Though as the loadout I had worked, I just didn't bother with the other weapons. Honestly though, that was for the best. That way, when I went back to the market in space, I only had to memorise where three of the shops were. Four if you count the grenade vendor. See, the market is a set of stores, that's how markets work. Each of them refill a specific weapon's ammo when you interact with the dude. Why it couldn't just be one vendor, I don't know. Why we had to bother with this, I don't know. But this is how the game was designed. You don't even need money, that's the weird thing. You just press one button and the ammo is refilled. Though you can only refill the ammo for a gun if you have said gun equipped. Otherwise, the game just says they can't help you. And the market is kind of huge. I kept thinking, this place this is a maze. Oh god, it's going to be a shooty level later, isn't it? And guess what? It totally was. And annoyingly, you have to return here every so often to get your mate to give you the madness drinks. And let's just quickly mention him. He is just one of this map's standard NPC models with precisely zero character. His voice actor sounded like he gave no shits about recording these lines. And given the game as a whole, I can't really blame them. We're hardly dealing with the top tier of indie shooters here. At its absolute best, it's a functional shooter. It's not an exciting shooter. It's not a particularly interesting or even a revolutionary shooter. It's just a shooter game that happens to work. I mean, that's, that's still better than some of the games we see out there, but that is its absolute best. That's the that's the height it reaches. I wanted to make a Doom comparison because we're a generic badass shooting demons. That is where my brain went when I first booted this game up. Although that comparison didn't last long because this game isn't an ounce as challenging or compelling or just as good as Doom is. Also, its soundtrack kind of sucks. There are a few other things worth mentioning here and there, like this dipshit who had no ability to crouch so he couldn't get through the giant hole in the wall that you don't need to crouch through. I mean, look at it. You don't need to crouch through that, but apparently you do. I just sort of stood there laughing at him for a couple of minutes. Your basic movement is slow. You sprint by holding L3 because this game hates you. And the jumping is terrible. First off, dropping more than six feet damages you, God knows why. And second off, in some levels you get these jumpy bits. If you don't sprint first, then my elderly grandma could clear more distance than you could. But if you do sprint, you risk overshooting, and all of these jumpy bits, they're over instant kill pits, even ones that make no sense. There's one of them that's just a nice flat plane of snow. I get dying falling into lava. I don't get dying because there's a few inches of snow beneath me. Maybe it was just easier for the dev to kill you rather than, you know, building a way out. The levels are varied, which I kind of appreciate. None of them looked all that amazing. I did like that they were all specific locations, though. That was nice. The graphics in general are just kind of meh. I mean, I've seen worse looking games from this generation, so yeah. I guess it, it, can, it can hold its head up high, knowing it's not the worst looking game I've seen this year. Of the three bosses in the game that I saw, I only died to one of their fights, and that wasn't even the boss that killed me. You'd expect the dragon in the dragon boss fight to do the damage but no. A regular peon beat me to death because I didn't notice he'd spawned. The fight with two giant worms had me on the fence though, with one doing a whole one HP damage to me over the course of the fight, but then his mate came up and really raised the stakes by doing a whole five HP damage to me. Maybe dangerous numbers for a low level D&D character, but when you have a hundred point health bar, it's a paper cut at best. What else is there really to say about this game? I feel like there's a lot else I could say, but at the same time, I just can't think of any of it. When it gets right down to it, Madness Beverage is just a functional and okay shooter. I mean, it's got some nicely varied environments to fight in. You've got a decent selection of weapons. It's got a story and what sounds like original music, and it's even obviously got the whole voice acting thing, which a lot of games skip on. And let's just appreciate Madness Beverage for reminding us all of just how hard it is to do voice acting and write music and stories. I know I called it a shitty indie shooter in my last review and in the intro of this very video, but to be honest, it's not that bad. It's not great. It's never going to be great. It's it's fine. It's functional. Honestly, there's really not much else I can say about it. I, I don't hate it. I didn't exactly have an amazing life-changing time playing it, but I've definitely had worse times with video games. It's... Yeah, it's just fine. It's it's okay. It's acceptable. 
It will kill a few hours if that's all you need, so there you go. There's a recommendation. If you need to kill a few hours, Madness Beverage can help you. There was this one bug right at the end where I got stuck in a wall because some enemies pushed me through the wall that I couldn't move and just had to stay there until I got killed. But I'll be honest, I didn't really get mad about it and it didn't happen anywhere else in the game, so it's probably just, just in that area. Yeah, there really isn't anything else to say. Madness Beverage, you are functional. You're okay. You're definitely more interesting than last week's game, which wanted to put me to sleep. I mean, you are kind of boring, but not to the same lethal level that Madness Summer was. Madness Summer? I was going to say Madness Beverage then. Why do you both have Madness in your title? It's so slightly confusing. We've still got a week to go before I can play Elden Ring for a review. It's kind of annoying that it comes out on a Friday, isn't it? So next week, I'm pretty sure we're talking about Fallout 4, because that's the thing I've been playing a lot of lately, so look forward to that. 